NASCAR headed to Music City in the Nashville Super Speedway, and Ross Chastain gets his third win of his career, which is interesting. One on a road course, one on a Super Speedway, this being the first win on what I would consider like a standard downforce style racetrack. <laughs> Nashville's not quite standard, but yes, <laughs> downforce racetrack, mixed between a mile and a half and a short track. Uh, interesting win in a hometown form. Yeah, interesting win. A great race. Two wide, three wide. We saw action all over the racetrack. But even with only four yellows, um, the race itself, you know, the battles were close. And I think that's what's interesting about Ross Chastain. He's been in the news, been in the conversation, too aggressive, not aggressive enough. He was called out at Darlington by Rick Hendrick. Then his owner mentioned on the radio that he was going to talk to him. This week in the media center said, well, I didn't really have the conversation. With all of that noise, what did you make of Ross's victory and the approach he had all day? I thought this was the evolution of Ross into what is a great race car driver. I think we've seen him be overly aggressive early in situations when he didn't need to be. He kind of did what he needed to do. They had speed, kind of went through the middle. When he needed to be aggressive late to protect the lead, he made a pretty daring move, three wide split two lap cars, and got clear of them. That actually created more separation to Martin Truex. I called it noise, and I believe Ross Chastain heard it because he mentioned it as soon as he got out of the car, that people would judge you, people would try to tear you down. I'm one of the media members that does judge his talents, and I love the fact that he tells a guy like me to be quiet. I don't care what you have to say. I'm going to be who I am. There was some swagger. I couldn't believe it was his first ever career poll. I mean, everything went right for the one car. Normally, we come on the show and talk about strategy and great calls. The great call for the one car was whatever they put in it for his setup and the adjustments they made. Much like last year, Toyota great early. Ross Chastain, though, wins in the end. Yeah, definitely. This is a racetrack, Nashville, that being concrete, I wouldn't have thought would be temperature sensitive, but we've seen two races that have gone from daytime into night. The racetrack seems to get a little, a little bit of change, and being able to, Phil did a great job of adjusting his car. Great speed at the end when they needed it. Extended practice for the weekend, which kind of helps us with the projections and who we think was going to run good. Um, and the projection model was pretty accurate. Four of the top five, eight of the top ten. The ones that were supposed to be up there, Kevin Harvick, Ryan Blaney had issues, Tyler Reddick had an issue. But let's talk about a couple. I don't like to use the word surprises, but definitely better days than expected. I would say the 43 of Eric Jones. Yeah, definitely. Eric Jones with an eighth place finish. And really, they drove themselves forward there. They showed that speed in practice and didn't know where that backup had a poor draw in qualifying and ended up starting deeper in the field. But just kind of methodically, you know, Eric Jones, Dave Allens, they, they worked their way through and got themselves into a top 10 and drove their way there. A great day for them. Well, if around the water cooler, Ross Chastain's big win isn't the first topic of conversation, then it's going to have to be Ryan Blaney's big accident. Lap 147, Brad Kozlowski has a little trouble on the restart, stacking up the field. It ends up up spinning Blaney three, four, five-ish wide. He's definitely in a bad position, but the car I want you to focus on is back here. The yellow car of Blaney, the darker car, Kyle Busch. Yeah, as you look at this rolling forward here, check up, they're pretty wide. Blaney checks up, Kyle Busch gets in the back of him. Two sl slide through here, but really, let's talk about how this impact right here with Blaney. Uh, it's not just one that happened. He was trying to drive his way through this. Well, I think that's the key. So I'm gonna draw right here on this. What's interesting is I think we all expected the car to more head in this direction right here, right? Spin out of the grass down into towards into turn one. Instead, it took this hard left-hand turn. Blaney even talks about it. After he gets out of uh, the infield care center, he talks about how he was driving this car. So let's zoom in a little bit. I think people think this driver is along for the ride. Ryan Blaney's doing anything but. He is driving this car, unfortunately, all the way to impact. Yeah, he was. And, and if you look at this, as it comes out, the trajectory looks like it's going to be, but it hooks there. It hooks left. He's got the wheels turned right. He's trying to get out of this. I actually think they catch up and actually get grip back. And, and, and the rear tires are still sliding, and the rear of the car continues to slide around. So although the wheels are turned to the right, which I think Ryan's doing the right thing, he's trying to get out of this. But it's like the front catches up with grip, and the rear never does. And that, that continues this hook into the left, into a, into a wall that's not protected with safer barrier. I think that's the next point of this conversation, right? So that's how he got to this situation. We're gonna show you this over and over, but this impact, I think it felt so severe to the driver because it is a concrete wall with no safety barrier. There's gonna be a lot of discussion. Ryan Blaney has some very pointed comments about how it should have been covered. Very easy to say after it happens. But I think at this point, if there's any walls at a racetrack, if they need to be there for any reason, they should be, have be covered with a safer barrier. Yeah, any place that you feel like that wall's got to be there to keep cars from getting to it, we need to con consider that cars can get to it. Uh, square hit for him here in one of those. This is 
NASCAR's got some updates coming to the front clips to soften up these things, but I think the racetracks need to do their part too. Another big conversation as we get, you know, only nine races away from the playoffs is who's in and who's out. And right now, NASCAR's most popular driver, the nine of Chase Elliott, because of races missed due to injury and a race missed due to uh, a suspension, sits 64 points below the playoff cut line. So very simple question, not a simple answer. Does the nine make the playoffs? I don't think without a win. Okay. I just don't see a point situation where he gets there. We can look at it. He had a great points day at Nashville and get your hopes forward. But overall, he's still 64 behind the cut line and a teammate in between him. I really think he's 92 behind Bubba if he really wants to make it enough points. Yeah, I mean, if you look, he was actually about the same amount at Darlington. So, he, you know, he's gotten down to the 60 point. I, I do believe the nine's going to run well, but the schedule is kind of an uphill battle for him as well. You look at the multiple road courses between here and the playoffs, the speedways. Now, that's good because I think he can win them. But I think it's very difficult to guarantee good points. Today. But it bring, also brings in about seven or eight guys that are behind that cut line that could win at those situations. With two speedway races, three road course races, there's a lot of people that could win that are outside of that 16. That'll make his, his need for the points piece be even farther in advance. And listen, I agree with you. I think Chase Elliott does make the playoffs. And I think soon enough, we don't have to keep talking about this because I think he is going to win a race. It's not going to be about points at all. Uh, but it's going to be fun to watch. Uh, it's always great when the stars and Chase Elliott said it, he loves the pressure. He, he wants the pressure. So it's going to be see, it, it, great to see how they respond to the pressure as we go through the summer months. And probably the biggest race of the summer. I know it's the biggest race on NBC. We're excited to have it for the first time in 75 years. NASCAR has never run a street course. That will change this weekend when the NASCAR Cup Series and Xfinity Series tackle the streets of Grant Park in downtown Chicago. You are in the race, calling the race for Jimmy Johnson. So as a competitor, what are you most excited about? What are you most concerned about? Yeah, I'm concerned about the unknown. You've never been there. We're not going to get to see this racetrack until really Saturday morning. A lot of 90 degree corners, pretty high speed backstretch, a uh, little bit of a right hander there. And the biggest challenge to me is the bridge coming from six to seven. That area to me is really anxious. It's, it's one that I think you've got to work on making sure you've got good platform control. You've got good braking stability to make that happen. Yeah, if you haven't seen the map, it involves Lakeshore Drive, Columbus, Michigan, all the famous streets of Chicago. It's 12 corners, 2.2 miles, Xfinity Series on Saturday, Cup on Sunday, concerts in between. It's a full event weekend on the streets of Chicago. I think it's going to be great for the fans. When we talk about the cars, the size, the noise, the speed, I think the street configuration is going to amplify that for the fans in person. Yeah, I think it's going to be a great show. I think it is. And, and the confines, right? There's no place to run off here. You're going to be tight. It's going to be, there's going to be action. There's going to be some wrecks. You've got to figure that because there's no place to run off. But uh, it'll be an exciting show. Well, listen, mistakes will be multiplied, but all that means are the drivers that are able to stand in victory lane. Victory is only going to be sweeter if you're able to pull off and win the first ever, the inaugural Chicago Street Race.